So you're browsing the web and you come across a web page with some really valuable information you'd like to scrape the raw data from so you can use it in your own project. What are your options? So you go to Google and you search for scraping and you'll come across a lot of companies that do web scraping, which is probably the most common type of scraping because it refers to taking the visual web page meant for a human being to look at and then having a tool try to figure out where the raw data you're interested in is living on. The benefits of this approach are that you'll typically be able to work with any type of web page you can see as a human if you tell the scraping software exactly where the information is on the page. So here are some web scraping tools I just found on Google randomly. I have no affiliation with these companies. And you'll see that, for example, they use this online store as an example. You tell the software the price you want. A lot of these are like point and click, or some of them are like using AI and they try to guess where the number is on the web page and you like confirm it or they do it automatically. The point is you're still basically rendering the full web page, uh, running JavaScript and CSS, and then you tell the software where to look. Some of these companies make their service available as a Chrome extension, which is kind of neat. Uh, this one is by Data Miner. You can look this up. I'll put a link to all these below so you can find them. This is Parse Hub. It does sort of a similar thing where it tries to analyze the page's uh, visual structure and it looks like it suggests where the data lives, so that's cool. And this is Octoparse, a similar tool. I think you download it to your computer. It's like a Windows and Mac app and then you tell it the web pages and what you want to extract out of them. So you keep looking on Google, you'll find more and more results. Some new ones have like AI features, they market. Uh, but the point is it's pretty commoditized. The good thing about these products are that they can literally scrape any website because they're rendering the full website and they're running all the JavaScript and CSS to render it visually so you can just point and tell it where the data is and it'll go and extract it out for you. Now to some of the problems that come with this approach. These are not problems about the products. Some of them solve these problems better than others. I'm just referring to the general idea of rendering a page on your computer and getting the data from it. The first problem is that you typically only have one of these. So the computer needs to be on while you're scraping and if you want to start running things in parallel, like run 10 different versions of the scraper in parallel on the same site, you're coming from the same IP address and the website will typically see you making too many requests and block your IP address. Some of these software products like Octoparse, I believe, offer proxy support, meaning you can provide a, a proxy server that it'll make the request from so the website will see the IP address coming from 10 different proxy server and not your home computer. That's a really good thing to do if you wanna do any scraping beyond say like 100 pages. This gets tricky for Chrome extensions because the Chrome extension is reliant on Chrome for making the network requests I'm not sure if maybe there's a way around this with Chrome extensions. Let me know in the comments if uh, there's a good one out there. The second challenge with web scraping is that web pages were built for humans with eyeballs to read. Websites are constantly optimizing how they present the raw data back to their users to improve conversion rates, user retention, etc. So they're constantly split testing and changing different presentation layers. This means that when you tell the web scraper where the data lives on a web page one day, Tomorrow, it may change and the web scraper may break or worse, give you back incorrect information. Like over here on this screenshot, the scraper is supposed to get 150 USD, but let's say the website changes the CSS style that the scraper depends on and swaps these two, then your scraper may start scraping down $300 USD and it'll never tell you. So because of these two problems, you're limited to one computer and what works today may not work tomorrow if a website changes. I think web scraping is a good solution if you need a quantity of data today for a one-time usage or say on a monthly basis where you can manually review the scraper to make sure it's fetching the data from the right part of the website. If you need to get the data daily or hourly or on an ongoing basis, you may have problems when websites start changing the HTML or styles of the data. You'll also have problems when you want to scale to gigabytes of data because you're dependent on one computer being on all the time, which no one wants. You can solve these two major problems by using what's known as data API scraping, which is when instead of looking at a web page, which is made for people to look at, you actually look at a lower level of the website's infrastructure and get back raw structured data meant for machines to look at. Let's take Twitter for example. I could use a typical web scraper that I showed you to scrape say all the tweets here and automate the software, tell it uh, you know the text is over here and to keep scrolling until it gets to like a thousand posts. That would work fine. 
until Twitter changes something. So before you use a web scraper, ask yourself, does this web page have a data API? If I search for Twitter data API, I'll find an official API that Twitter maintains that will send back all this data in structured form so it will never change and I can consume this very easily. Here's the raw data the Twitter data API will send back to you showing you all the stuff that you're after without having to jump through that hoop of web scraping. You can see the exact date it was created down to the second instead of what the web client chooses to display at that moment in time. The raw text of the tweet Twitter will even go and extract out the hashtags for you so you don't have to go and manually parse them out. Here's an external link in the tweet and a whole bunch of other metadata, including information about the user as well, their follower count, their description, so much more data than you could possibly get from web scraping because the company has thought of this before and wants to make this data available to people interested in it. The downside of this is that it's technical. It's above most people's heads. It's expensive to hire a programmer or you have to go and find someone on Upwork and it takes a long time. Which is why I created this. This is the Steve C data platform, which works with a number of known APIs that I myself and other users have gone and went through the trouble of documenting how to use them for you. Here's that same API endpoint I showed you to get tweets and the CC platform knows how to communicate with Twitter and get that data back. And more importantly, automatically parse the content out into a CSV format that you can get. You would typically need to hire someone to write a program to access that URL and then paginate through it and download the results in CSV format. I built Steve C to eliminate all of that. So that's great, but not every website is like Twitter and offers an official API you could use. However, a lot of large sites like Instagram or Home Depot that don't have an official API have an unofficial data API they typically use to power their mobile apps, where this data API is what sends the phone the data that it then shows on the user's screen. For example, this is an Instagram one that simulates what happens on the phone when I click the contact button to get someone's phone and email. So because it's unofficial, there are disclaimers here on the Steve C platform warning you that if you were to execute this, you may or may not be violating Instagram's terms of service. So you'd have to use these at your own risk. However, you can get the data much more reliably and at scale by running on proxies in the cloud that Steve C data does for you and get gigabytes and gigabytes of data every day consistently. So what does this mean for you? If you just need to scrape data one time and get a little bit of it, then by all means use a web scraper, point and click where you want it and click download. It'll be fast and easy. However, if you need a large amount of data, like I'd say over a gigabyte, and you need it on a recurring basis, and it's very important that it's correct and doesn't silently change those pricing values like I showed you as an example, you want to check if that web page or website has a data API available. If so, you could hire someone to access this or use the Steve C data platform to scrape the data that way instead and do it at scale in the cloud using cloud-based servers and proxies, which means you can close your laptop. If the company does not have an officially supported data API, you can consider browsing CC data for unofficial endpoints, or you can watch my other videos on how you can uncover some of these hidden endpoints using Chrome developer tools. That gets a little bit more technical where you would need someone to help you build out the unofficial API. And again, it's usually against the company's terms of service if it constitutes automated access. So I can't endorse anyone go and do this. But I will just say in industry, it happens all the time. People typically though write custom software to do this. The Steve C data platform will alleviate you of having to write custom software because the platform is designed to just work with these endpoints in a generic way. Check the description for links to those web scrapers we looked at in the beginning. Also, if you know of good ones that I left out, put them in the comments and I'll update the description. I'll also leave a link to the Steve C data platform, which again will allow you to scrape consistent data if you can get your hands on a data API, official or unofficial. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if this answered some questions on what web scraping is and some of the other options you may have. Leave more questions in the comments below if you have them. I do read to and typically reply to all my comments. Thank you and stay data driven.